everyone and welcome to Maker Spotlight. My name is Maggie Cullen. I'm the wholesale director for Oh You're Lovely. With me today we have Amy Garrett. She is the lead florist owner, all of the extraordinaire at The Secret Gardeners and she is based out of Illinois. So Amy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for asking. Of so course, cool. of course, of course. We're super excited to chat with you. Um, and I guess just to start, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and um, your business. The one thing I was really excited about is that you started off as a fresh florist and you're still yeah. doing that. Yes, I do. And then you incorporated the wood flowers. So tell us a little bit about yeah. what, um, you know, made you start your own business and go into yeah. florestry specifically. Yeah. So um, I actually, in my previous life, uh, about 10 years ago, I was actually a teacher, um, but I was an art major and always just had, a, you know, kind of a creative eye and I always liked, you know, making things. Um, so when we moved here a while back, um, I decided to stay home with my kids um, and I just, you know, had the itch to do something. So um, my aunt had actually owned a floral business um, and I had worked for her for a period of time, a long time ago. And I basically said, hey, why don't we just do like weddings and events and, you know, we can just kind of pick and choose what we want to do. Uh, we don't have to be super committed to anything. Um, so we basically started doing that. Um, and so basically, you know, just doing weddings and events and then it just kind of evolved into um, daily flower work. Uh, I started in my basement. Um, basically getting water out of my bathtub in the guest bathroom. And um, so that got super busy. And then I grew and needed a bigger workspace. And then in 2020, I actually bought my, um, my brick and mortar building. Um, but yeah, so basically we kind of, our bread and butter is weddings and events. Um, but for the daily um, product that I have, I like incorporating a lot of vintage, um, not so um, typical wholesale products that you would get from like a, you know, a wholesaler for containers and all that kind of stuff. Right. So um, I feel like I have kind of a fun niche with all that. Everything's kind of curated to things that I like selfishly, um, but that's kind of my my jam is just you know things that maybe are not so typical that you would find in a flower shop. Right. Um, I feel like that's where the wood flowers have really just kind of opened a whole new world for me that mm -hmm. it's just, I feel like the possibilities are endless. Yeah. 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 100%. And I understand what you're saying. You're I, more like a bespoke type, more unique yeah. vintage things you find, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. um as opposed to like mass producing anything you're more right. of a, like yeah right yeah. right mm -hmm. very cool very cool yeah. so um you know one question I, I was interested in asking you specifically because you do have the fresh floral side and you've been yeah. working with the wood flowers is um you know they're very different I did one fresh flower wedding and yeah it was a whole different stress level than oh, a wood yeah. flower wedding for Sure. reasons because yeah. I like oh I'm supposed to keep these alive for the yeah um, it, can, it can be uh it can be interesting for sure yeah so my question to you yeah. is you know what um you know what are some of the differences between the two and then right. you know do you have a preference between the two or is it like at different points one feels easier to work with than the other. Right. Oh, definitely. Um, I feel like, you know, for the weddings and everything, um, obviously people seem to be gravitate more to the fresh product, yep. which is how we started. So honestly, it's kind of second nature for us. Yeah. Um, but I honestly, I kind of incorporate the, the wood flowers anywhere and everywhere that I can. Like there are a lot of times where, um, like I don't usually tint my wood flowers. Mm -hmm. So if I need something extra um, with, you know, like that beautiful white clean color, I'll put it on a stem and I'll add it to a bouquet. Yep. Um, I actually have started using um, the wood flowers for a lot of my wearables. 
So for my um, wrist corsages, I'll do like a metal cuff and I'll incorporate um, the wood flowers as kind of my focal flower. And then I'll add dried product to those. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's really cool because it's something that, you know, the moms or the grandmothers or whoever can have as kind of a keepsake. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. And they're just, they're really pretty. They're, you know, they're really beautiful and obviously a lot less um, time sensitive in using. Mm -hmm. um, but I can use them pretty much in weddings or daily things or. I'll put them in my succulent planters. I can use them uh, pretty much anywhere and everywhere. So yeah, yeah. And I love what you said about keeping them in their raw state because yeah. when they, you know, are in that cream colored, like they're ready to use. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, you can yeah. in different colors through fresh, through dried, through all right. of that. Um, you know, and just keeps it very simple on your end in terms of, right. you know, you're not needing to learn how to dye them. You're not, right. oh, as yeah. a former art teacher, you said you would yeah. have that. <laughs> you, yeah. You'd be great at yeah. that. Um, but yeah, no, that's perfect. And I also, you know, I find with, when it comes to the wearables, like the corsages and those sorts of mm -hmm. things, you're able to use like a glue that's going to make it stick to that metal cuff yes. without having to worry about it. It's a lot less stressful for sure. Yeah. Like, is yeah. this going to hold up? Is it going to stay on? It's um, a very reliable product, which is just, that's priceless, you know, yeah. in this business. Right, right, right. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you mentioned a little bit how your business changed over time, but you also mentioned that you opened your brick and mortar in 2020. So, I did. <laughs> so Great idea, huh? Yeah, right, right. But it's still around. Yeah. You're still yeah. there. So, um, you know, I'm curious, like how obviously a pandemic affected so many different things yes. and, you know, especially opening up a storefront yeah. during that time, like. How did you kind of evolve with, you know, the restrictions and with, you know, all of the supply challenges and right. all of that, like, did you, did you change your business dynamic in any way? And, yeah. you know, yeah. if you want to go into a little bit of that. That'd be well, great. luckily when I, and I actually bought my brick and mortar in July of 2020, which was okay. even crazier. Okay. But I think um, the thing that I was most concerned about were my kids being in school. So I feel so deeply for those working parents who have no childcare and are supposed to be doubling as um, teachers right. um, for their kids. I mean, I just, I don't know how, how they did it. And I yeah. just feel like it was a time where everybody struggled. Yeah. So I'm very blessed that my kids went to private school and they were open the entire time. Yeah. Um, obviously they were masked up and, you know, they had precautions and they did things like that. Um, okay. But I was very, very lucky that I was able to uh, focus my time here. Um, yeah. And I was also really lucky that a lot of my events really didn't get canceled. They just got, um, they just got postponed and rescheduled. Right. So, um, you know, with like the weddings and events being, you know, my main source of income, right. I was able to make it work financially. Right. So, um, but as far as like um, how I change things here, I really tried to, for a long period of time, um, just put it out there that we can send somebody a smile. Like, who do you know that's really, really shut in and really could use, you know, some love and just knowing that someone's out there for them so yeah. I mean there is a good period of time where I would do things like that and sell them at super super affordable pricing and I would do subscriptions and you know get things to people on a regular scheduled um you know calendar yeah. um but it always gave somebody I feel like something to look forward to yeah and I think that you know just knowing that I was doing that for someone. It just really, um, I don't know, it was very empowering and I felt mm -hmm. lucky to do it. And yeah. so I, I feel like I got a pretty good following when I started doing that kind of stuff, yeah. which is obviously huge. And um, it really helped um, contribute to just my overall clientele, I think. Yeah. yeah. So I was yeah. able to um, 
get a lot of customers that way. And people have been very loyal to my business and very supportive. And so, and since then, I think, you know, adding the wood flowers, everything has just kind of evolved. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's awesome. Do you think, you know, has your messaging stayed similar to that, like smile, joy, um, that sort of thing? Have you pivoted at all since then or? Um, I mean, yes and no. Yeah. Pretty much. I feel like that's just kind of how I am. Like as a person, I, you know, like anytime I feel like things are not going to stay nice in the cooler, I won't throw them in the trash. You know, I'll be like, who, who do we know that has a birthday? Um, let's take these to a nursing home. Let's, you know, how can we, I don't want to waste all this product when somebody can really enjoy it and love it. So, um, definitely with the fresh florals, that's been, um, something that I definitely try to maintain. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but you know, things are always up and down, you know? Oh, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. It's always evolving, always, you know, moving in different directions and just kind of sometimes along for the ride, but, but it sounds like, you know, you were very successful in, in pushing it along the path that was was true to you, but also Mm -hmm. successful to make sure, you know, you were able to. Yeah. And I think any personally, I, I am not the best businesswoman, you know, like there's a lot of things that I am terrible about, terrible about, like, um, you know, the logistics and everything like that, but I feel like I can make a good product. Right. Um, but regardless, I feel like if you aren't able to pivot and adjust as a business owner that, you know, you can only do it for so long. Right. So you have to be kind of flexible. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, you know, do you find, you know, when it comes to the logistics side of things, like the accounting, the, you know, emailing, the course, but all of that sort right. of stuff, um, you know, I, yeah. I mentioned that is a cha- somewhat of a challenge. Um, it yeah. It, are you, or do you bring in any outside help for those things? Yes. One where you like focus your time on certain tasks to like, let's get this done and then we can move into design. Yeah, How do you yeah. work through those challenges? Oh my gosh. I honestly, uh, ask me someday when I retire. <laughs> uh, like I, I feel like that's still something that is a daily struggle for me because I could come in here and the day will go by in the snap of a finger if I am, you know, working on a product or just, you know, playing around with stuff or, you know, experimenting with, new ideas and things like that. But if I know I have to sit down and write checks and do invoicing and, you know, yeah, the email corresponding, I, uh, I'm good at self-sabotage where I'll just put it off until the last minute a lot of times, um, because it's just so easy to get lost in the work. Yeah. Uh, And I feel super lucky that I get to come here and do this every day. It's really been, uh, um, it's amazing. I love it. So absolutely. I mean, when you're creative, the creating is the favorite part. <laughs> it's not work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome. Right. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, on that, like what, you know, are some things you enjoy the most about your business? Uh, like obviously the designing, um, right. are there other parts that you really enjoy? Um, or was there like, one event you did that kind of stands out in your mind as like, this was the best. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I love, as much as I don't like the correspondence aspects of the business and all the, you know, technology stuff, I do love working with couples and I love working with people to really just try to personalize things for them. Um, I feel like I have been very blessed to have just 99.9% of the brides and the couples and the people that I work with have been fantastic. I mean, just incredible people. So um, I don't know. I just, I love, you know, getting that finished product out there and just finding out that everything went smooth and they were happy. And, you know, the bride cried when she saw her flowers in a good way, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like that's very rewarding for me. Um, 
I love getting professional photos back of everything. I'm like, wow, you know, everything, you can actually see everything that we did. And it's like, this is why we do this, you know? Yeah. Um, but just anytime you're, you're making a product and you accomplish what you want to, it's, it's very uh, gratifying. 100%. And I was yeah. actually going to touch on the photography portion of it because yeah. when you're doing, you know, weddings and events, um, mm -hmm. you know, you start to build like these great relationships also with sure. the photographers and right. the local, you know, other vendors. Um, right. And, you know, I would imagine that because of these, you know, coming across these photographers and doing sure. events with them, like, you've got, and I've seen, you have some great product photography that yeah. you're able to utilize on your website and things like that. Sure. Because, you know, the photographers like to get their name out there too. And they like to- sure. Oh, we, have, we all have to really like, just kind of, we're all in it together. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Definitely. Awesome. So um, just a couple more questions. Um, one of the biggest ones, and I've loved, you know, doing these interviews with creatives and with makers because mm -hmm. everyone has their own like spin on this, but they all meld together. So right. what advice would you give to someone who wants to get started, whether it's wood flowers, florals, overall, just in the group, right. like, who wants to, you know, work for themselves and be an entrepreneur, what is some advice you would give them to either encourage or make them really think through doing it? Right. Well, um, I personally feel like I uh, am really good at just being like, why wouldn't it work out? You know? Right. And my husband's just the opposite. Like, I remember when I got my LLC and he's like, I don't know why you're doing this. This is not a good idea. Um, he jokingly called my whole thing when I started it, my arts and crafts. So I like to give him a hard time, you know, yeah. he's come around, yeah. but um, I would say just jump in, you know, feet first, find people to mentor you. Um, I, I really, um, I found some great people to ask questions from. Um, there was a lady at my local grocery store who was the florist there and I still talk to her daily and I'll go in there and pick her brain about stuff and, um, I think you just have to like, you know, be prepared to learn. Um, try never to get too discouraged. And when you mess up, you uh, pick yourself up and move on. Yep. Um, and I think another huge thing for me personally is just being kind to people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, when you have kind of a somewhat good relationship with people that you're working with, um, and you already have kind of a good rapport going, I feel like they're a lot easier to, you know, if something does go wrong to kind of let it slide, you yeah. know? And in the beginning, I messed up a ton. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that if you, you know, aren't such a people person, maybe it's not the thing that you want to do, but um, if you're willing to learn from things and, you know, put all those good vibes out there that you really, I don't think you can go wrong. You just have to keep going and, you know, don't yeah. listen to the naysayers. Right. No, I, I love that. I think it is so yeah. important to have the knowledge to know yeah. that you don't know everything and that you are going to need to learn and that, you know, sure. whatever place you're starting from, there's always some other place you can be. You're like, yeah, I'm still learning. I mean, okay. uh, there's a ton of stuff I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I, I enjoy it. So I guess as soon as I don't, then maybe I'll do something different, but right. for right. now I'm just gonna, right. keep doing it, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate that so much. So, um, uh, my final question to you, is there anything else you wanted to discuss? Anything else you wanted to put out there? Um, any, new things you're working on with your business or um um actually yeah so my whole it's been really slow um just for our daily getting people kind of in the door right thing and i'm right now i'm just chalking it up to oh people are on vacation yep. you know it's not the insanely high gas prices or anything like that 
Right, right. Um, so I've been kind of good about hoarding and buying all this cool, you know, kind of boho vintage yep. um, furniture and, um, you know, containers and artwork. So I'm actually doing this huge, um, I'm calling it a, a bougie yard sale, oh. um, where we're really just kind of showing everybody, um, you know, not just the floral aspect, but just kind of our, you know, creative aesthetic all together. Right. Um, because that's another thing that I really like doing. Um, but besides that, you know, like the wood flowers, um, I'm gonna keep definitely doing that. I've been, um, you know, incorporating those with like my vintage containers and actually um, making uh, a signature scent and making them into diffusers so that they have like a custom scent from my store, which I think is super fun. That is um, awesome. Yeah. What's, what's another scent like? What is it? Is it's there... floral, I guess. Um, it's just kind of also the one that everybody liked the most. I guess it's kind of hard to describe. Yeah. But I'm calling it Dahlia Petal. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, like it's uh, it's just kind of an evolving thing. Everything's different every day. We just never really know what we're going to do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And I like, I love that take on it as well. You know, that it's, yeah. you know, this is where we started. This is where we are. And let's also look to the future because, you I know, see. things can change. And like you yeah. said, if you don't love working with fresh floors anymore, you can move on yeah. to, you know, furniture rentals from all the cool stuff that you've collected. Exactly. Like there's yeah. always- But I feel like, I also feel like as far as like the wood flowers are concerned, um, I feel like when people come in here and they are just looking around, it's something they don't get buyer's remorse from because it's not something that's perishable. But right. it's something that's beautiful and, um, you know, it's not like they're spending a ton of money on it. It's like, you know, it's like, well, why, why can't I buy this? It's great in my kitchen or my bathroom or whatever. Right. Um, it's something that I just feel like um, it's practical, you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's another aspect that I really liked having in here because I, you know, with, if you're just doing flowers or things that die, you're just not going to get every kind of customer through the door. Right. Right. You do yeah. get the people who are wanting the fresh florals but also the people who are wanting to buy something that'll stay with them for okay. a long time for sure mm -hmm. yeah awesome awesome well mm -hmm. this was awesome um so i really you. appreciate your time thanks Amy. for your patience earlier oh of course of course Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries at all technology is you know yeah. different things to different people. Yeah, sure. definitely. <laughs> um, but for those of you who are watching, thank you so much for watching this Maker Spotlight. Once again, this is Amy Garrett with The Secret Gardeners based in Illinois. Um, I, you know, we will be posting pictures of, of her creations, both fresh and uh, wood flower. And we're excited um, for you to give her a follow um, and check out her website as well. Um, but if you are interested in being um, one of our makers that we are spotlighting, the information will be below um, so you can fill out that form and we will get in touch hopefully soon. Thanks again, Amy. I really appreciate your thank time. Thank you. It's been fun. Yes, thank you.